thank you for joining us. Lots of people saying connecting, so just give it a few more seconds. Hello. Um, so my name's Zoe Wiggins from Hearts Ways to Wear, um, and I'll be your host for today. And I'm joined by local author, Becky Alexander, who will be giving us some fantastic tips on how we can make our lunches more eco-friendly um, and also more interesting. Um, I'm also joined by two colleagues from Hearts Ways to Wear today. So we've got Helena Jackson, who'll be helping on the tech side of things, and David Burley, who will be speaking later about the food waste issue in Hertfordshire. Um, so just a couple of very quick housekeeping bits. Um, if I can ask you all to stay on mute during the presentation so we can hear everyone well. Um, but if you do have any questions, then please just pop them in the chat. Um, Helena and I may answer some as we go along. Um, otherwise, we shall read them out at the end um, for either Becky or David, and we'll get through as many as we possibly can. Um, so just a very quick bit of background. Um, I've mentioned Hearts Waste to Wear a couple of times, so just so you know who we are. Um, it's part of the Hertfordshire Waste Partnership, which was established in the 90s to coordinate the waste management of all 11 councils in Hertfordshire. And Waste to Wear is the campaigning side of that. Um, so we work with all the councils to share ideas and best practice to first and foremost reduce and reuse and also recycle waste. Um, and food waste is one of our big priorities for this year. So that's why we're doing this event today. Um, and David will be talking more about that later. Um, but first I will hand over to Becky. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, it's so nice to see so many lovely friendly faces and um, Thank you for joining us on your, your lunch break. Um, I hope, I mean, if you have your lunch with you and you're eating it, that's totally fine. Um, just carry on. I know lots of you are working and have busy days. Um, so first of all, I'm going to um, introduce who I am. And I am a food writer. Um, some of you might know me for the food column I write in the Hearts Advertiser, um, which goes out all across Hertfordshire. I've actually been writing that for, for 10 years. Um, and it's a fortnightly column. So that means I've actually written about 300 columns now. Um, and that tends to be about, well, it could be anything from anything to do with food. So it could be um, a profile on um, a producer. It could be a market stall, a restaurant, a cafe, a pub, a bar, all sorts of things. So um, when we started it 10 years ago, I'm not quite sure we, we thought we'd be doing it for so long and that we would find so many things to write about but we have so we, we'll keep going with that. I'm in the Guild of Food Writers which is a national um, group of food writers and journalists so that's a great source of information that I, I learn a lot from that as well. Um, I'm also the author of um, a book called Pact um, which is uh, this book here um, with Michelle Lake who is a, a nutritionist and that came out a couple of years ago and that is full of lunch recipes which is one of the reasons I'm here today because um, I'm a sort of lunch fanatic really and that was lots of recipes for lunches that you could take to work or you could have at home. Um, I have also uh, written the introduction and the um, sort of some of the information, the profiles for a book called The Hertfordshire Cookbook. So I don't know if, if people have seen that, but that's all about where we live, you know, so all over Hertfordshire. Um, this came out last year amongst all the madness, but it actually did really well. It's got all sorts of recipes and sort of um, profiles on some of our producers, restaurants, cafes, pubs, all sorts. And then um, the next thing that I'll be working on is a new book, which is coming out in January. In fact, Helena, if you don't mind, you can put on the first slide and that will show people the cover of that because I don't have one of those. So it's um, a brand new book coming out in January, which is going to be called The Green Lunch Book. Um, and this is a sort of the first time I've actually mentioned this out in, uh, in the real world. So I've been working on it for over a year. It's going to be published by um, Orion Hachette and uh, Lawrence King is their imprint. And you can just see that one there with the sort of um, illustration. Um, it's all been photographed and designed. It's all happening and it will be in bookshops in January. So this is a bit of a sneak preview. The, that book will have over 60 recipes and they are all going to be plant based. So veggie, vegan, using as much sort of as many pulses and grains and vegetables and all that sort of thing to make your lunches delicious and interesting. 
and it's got a bit of an eco angle. So it's just trying to remind us to be more mindful about where we are. Um, so the, 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 the name of this, this talk is Save the Planet in Your Lunch Break. And the reason for that is there's an overwhelming amount of information out there about food and um, the environment. And I think it can be a bit overwhelming. You know, we've just recently had this film on Seaspiracy. We've had Cowspiracy. We've had, there's endless information. Should you be vegan? Should you eat meat? If so, is it from a local artisanal farmer? I mean, it's just phenomenal. We've had programs about, um, the plastic disaster that we're all facing at the moment. We've had just um, at the Prue Leaf programme this week, which was about food waste on Channel 4. There's so much out there. I think it can be quite hard to think what to do. What can I actually do that's going to make a difference? So one angle I thought people might like to take is trying to do something in your, in your lunch break. We all eat lunch every day. You know, that's 365 lunches a year. Multiply that by the people, uh, you know, in, in the UK. And I think maybe if you start at lunch, it seems less terrifying. Maybe you can make some changes in your lunch. So, for example, if you've got, um, you know, busy family life, you know, I've got two teenagers. They, they one of them is a quite a sort of uh, right on vegetarian. The other one, not interested. She would happily just eat chicken and potatoes and get on with her day. She just doesn't care. She just wants to eat. So how do you navigate all of that? So I think possibly lunch is the way to do it. So you can deal with dinner another time, you know, but lunch, you can start making changes. Um, Helena, would you mind um, going on to lunch? Thank you, that's slide two. One of the reasons I have written about lunch so much over the past few years is I think it really contributes to the plastic problem that we have in the UK. If you just imagine, um, you know, a, a Pret or a Marks and Spencer, all those lovely places full of delicious food and imagine the fridge aisles, they are full of sandwich wrappers, plastic boxes, crisp packets, juice, juice containers, whatever. And the, the statistics on this are incredible. Britain's lunch on the go habit is generating nearly 11 billion items of packaging waste a year. 11 billion. You can imagine how much that is. So if you're in the habit of, you know, work, going to work, going to buy your lunch in, um, you know, a local shop or whatever, you could be buying one, two, three pieces of, of single use packaging just in one lunch break. Now, there's a lot of talk about recycling and how we can reuse that sort of, uh, those sorts of materials, but there's a lot of problems as we know with, with uh, packaging. For example, you look at a sandwich packet, you've got bits of cardboard, you've got bits of plastic in there. What do you do with it? And I think we need to be honest, I'm not sure, or we, we know for sure, people are not putting those in the right containers. Um, so that's one issue. You think about things like crisp packets, those little salad pots with the little plastic thing inside with your salad dressing, that adds up, that's a lot of plastic. So if there's some way that we can start as individuals to cut back on buying that sort of thing, then we're gonna stop adding to that plastic mountain. Um, and, you know, we can be quite old fashioned about it. There's nothing wrong with making your own lunch. It's almost like it got a bit sort of untrendy or something. You know, years ago, people would just take their lunch to work. You know, they'd take a sandwich or whatever. And I think there's so many sort of beautifully packaged and sold things in the shops. We sort of think, oh, it's a treat. I'm going to buy that for myself. Um, maybe we need to step back and think, really, do I need to do that? We could, I could go on for days as well about um, the markup on some of those lunches. If you think about the cost of the ingredients that's gone into some of those lunches, you know, it's not necessarily good value. Um, I'm also going to mention, as you can see on the slide, um, the UK produces more plastic waste per person than most countries in the world. We are second only to the United States. 
that's phenomenal. And I think partly that is our lunch habit. There are other sort of countries around the world and they are much better at making their own lunches. They've got a different culture. We, we love our convenience lunches. So it, it, we're not very good at this. We've also got um, an issue with our recycling and um, David's going to explain a little bit more about the facts behind that later on. Um, Greenpeace have got a big campaign going on at the moment about um, what's happening with our plastic recycling. So there is no away. There is, it's not all being turned into nice pencils or, or fleece jackets or, or house lining. It's going to, a lot of it's getting incinerated. It's not great. We have to tackle that problem. So let's make making your own lunch a good thing. It's not, it doesn't have, it's not sort of low budget. It's just, it's going to solve some problems. Okay. So that's a bit of a rant about that. Um, so what can we do about it? Um, I mean, food is to be enjoyed. I mean, it's, I mean, it's the best, it's the best part of my day. I mean, I, you know, it's three meals a day. I, I would, I often eat far more than that. I have snacks, you know, I mean, I'm always eating. So I don't want, um, any conversation about food to sound sort of boring and depressing. I mean, it's got to be, I mean, it's a joy, isn't it, uh, uh, to eat well. I mean, we're very lucky we have such incredible food around us. But there are some things we can do um, to sort of shop smart and to think about how we can, um, first of all, cut back on the amount of food that we waste and also, you know, make our lunches interesting. You know, if we're thinking about I haven't got much time. I haven't got time to think about elaborate lunches. Um, you know, I'm rushing around in the mornings to get to work. I can't be prepping a lunch. Or you've got 10 minutes between Zoom calls for your work meetings. You don't have endless time. So it is very much about shopping, um, shopping ahead and thinking ahead. Obviously, this talk today is uh, very much thinking about the food waste issue that we have in the UK. Uh, David's going to talk about a little bit more later on. What I think has surprised me is finding out how much food we actually waste in our households. Um, the supermarkets have got a lot they can do, definitely, and we'll mention that later. But what we're finding is people are buying food, it's coming into the house, and then it's getting wasted and it's something like 20 percent. I'm sure David will correct me on that. It's a phenomenal amount of food that we're actually wasting that's going to be that's edible. I'm not talking about banana peels or, you know, bits of carrot or something. It's actual quality items like, you know, bread and fish and meat, uh, cheese, fruit. All of those things are being wasted. So how can we uh, improve that situation? So. Um, I'm just going to have a look at a couple of suggestions that might help um, anyone listening in today about how they can cut back on food that they waste and also help them make their lunches more interesting. So Helen has just put up this slide. So what can we do? Now, I'm not expecting you all to suddenly do all of these things, but there might be one or two things that you think, okay, this might work for me. And um, we, this, these slides and a recording of this will be available if, if you want to. We, um, some of the things that we waste the most in the UK are bread. And I think my understanding is if you imagine a, a sliced loaf in wrapped in plastic, not a great start, but it's wrapped in plastic, and a, a third to half of those loaves of bread are getting wasted. And I think it's a bit of a catch-22. I think part of the problem is it's so readily available and it's so sort of cheap in many ways, people don't value it. One suggestion would be to buy, first of all, obviously buy bread and paper if you can. I mean, we're lucky in, in Hertfordshire, we've got Simmons everywhere. I mean, um, you know, we have got some options. I often buy bread in St Albans Town Centre at Brown Breads, they're very good. But also if you buy something slightly more interesting, something you're really going to uh, value and enjoy. So bread that's got beautiful seeds in it or a piece of sourdough, um, a ciabatta, whatever you fancy. What you can do, if you're, if you're in a habit, you know you throw bread away bread quite a lot. Start by slicing it up and putting it in the freezer using what you like. 
I find that if I actually buy good quality bread from a bakery, it does actually last three to four days. Um, so anyway, so think about things like bread. If it's slightly more delicious than you're used to, you're probably going to enjoy your lunch more. I mean, a, 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 a sort of a couple of slices of um, factory bread is not that tasty. Anyway, so bread. Think about your, the bread you buy. I am a big fan of um, eating veggie and vegan stuff at lunchtime for all the reasons I've mentioned earlier. But one of the things we can do is buy things like chickpeas, butter beans, lentils, black beans in cans. So they can just sit in your cupboard. You can just put those in your cupboard, you know, get your online shop, or whatever, and they're there. So if it's a random Thursday lunchtime, you don't know what to eat, you've actually got good quality cooked protein ready to go. Um, I'm just going to show you a couple of things I have very quickly in the cupboard just um, so I could actually be in my kitchen now but here we go. Um, I just pulled out these morning. So these are black chickpeas so if you're thinking okay that's you know chickpeas that's not very interesting you can get black ones now they're sort of dark brown but anyway I've got um, some beluga lentils um, they sound very swish. They are just lovely cooked green lentils. Lovely. Just sprinkle those into your salads or whatever. I've got some butter beans. Um, love butter beans. You can put them in soups. You can have them as they are. Um, tins of tofu. I mean, you know, I just pulled that out today. You don't have to buy those wrapped in plastic if, if that's something you're worried about. One of the things people waste a lot of is fish and meat. Um, and I think it's because they worry about the sell by dates and um, has it gone off. So you end up with half a packet of salmon or something. You've only eaten a bit of it. So one idea um, to avoid that is if you switch to things like chickpeas, butter beans, pulses, lentils, you're not, they don't go off. You know, they sit in your cupboard for months. Um, they're also a fraction of the price. A tin of even the, the swishest looking lentils is, is going to be 90p. You get two lunches out of that, 45p a, a lunch, compared to a pack of salmon, chicken, or whatever you're normally buying. So switching to sort of plant-based lunches once or twice a week or every day, if that's what you, if you like, um, can help you cut back on wasting um, expensive products and um, using animal products that you don't always need. Okay, another shopping tip, salad. Okay, we're just coming in some warm weather at last, hooray, thank goodness. If um, you tend to sort of waste things like, I don't know, cucumbers, um, salad leaves, think about buying longer lasting um, salad vegetables that sounds blindingly obvious but what I mean by that is um, things that are going to last for ages radishes they'll last a week or more rocket dark green leafy leaves like rad uh, rocket and spinach last longer than some of the softer leaves you can also buy growing growing lettuces that you can just have roots in and you put them in water and they'll last you can just snip off some leaves you can stick it on your windowsill and eat them um, as you want them. And that's great if, the, if it's just one or two of you in your household. Red peppers, they last for at least a week. So they're a good one. Carrots, they're not just for, for children to put in their lunchbox. You can have those as well. I quite like them grated into a salad. Obviously you can use them for things like soups and whatever as well. Um, so if you're finding that you're throwing away the same sort of things each week, maybe stop buying those and just switch to a few other things. Okay. Uh, refill shops. So um, if you are wanting to mix up your lunches and try some new sort of plant based lunches, they're a good way of getting some new things. So if you've never tried Frica, quinoa, all that sort of thing, um, they're great. You can go and buy small amounts to try. They're also a great place to buy things like seeds, nuts, rice, um, you know, all of, all of those sorts of interesting ingredients that you can add to your lunch and make it a little bit more interesting. And then I just put a note on there about shopping smart. So if you're thinking about, right, okay, I'm gonna make my lunch more often, I'm gonna take it to work. Uh, I would caution against rushing out and buying a swanky new lunchbox, because that isn't brilliant for the planet either, by buying more stuff. Have a look and see what you have. I mean, I, it doesn't matter if it's a bit sort of, 
um, knackered looking, just use whatever you have, something secondhand, vintage. I found um, lunch boxes in charity shops, absolutely fine. Stick them in the dishwasher if you're worried about it, give it a, a rinse with hot water. Um, and if you are taking your lunch to, to work, um, whether it's a school, a hospital, office, you could invest in a lunch bag and a freezer pack and then you don't have to worry about a crowded work fridge. Okay. I was just going to say, actually, I can see a couple of things popping up in the, the chat. Um, you might want to, if, if you're having lunch, why don't we, you know, I don't want this just to be me rambling on. I mean, I'm, I'm bored of listening to me already, to be honest. Um, if you want to say in the chat what, you've, what you're what you having for lunch today, and it might give people, um, other people some ideas as well. So please do, do chat away and add that in. Um, in fact, I think we were going to have, we've got a poll, haven't we? We were going to pop in at some point about what we're having for lunch. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I don't know what you're all up to at the moment, but I've spent years working in London and commuting and taking lunch, but I am actually obviously just working at home at the moment. So this, this is, what is your go-to lunch if you're working at home? So sandwich, soup, salad, something on toast. Well, that was me today. I had, um, I had hummus on toast with some, um, chopped up red peppers and rocket on that. Very interesting. Um, leftovers um, or something else. So if you want to have a go at the poll, or maybe I'll have to, do I get to do this as well? I'm going to put something on toast. Okay. So I guess that's whizzing away doing its, its wonderful things. Um, yeah, we can give people a couple of seconds and then when Helena, if you could share the results when it looks like we've had most people respond. Oh, lots of people had leftovers. That's great. Oh, that's great. So, what I wonder what people mean by leftovers. Um, do you maybe you could put in the chat? Do you mean um, literally what something from last night's dinner? And did that make a whole meal, or was it something that you then added to? Uh, I'm trying to think. I had earlier on in the week. We made. Um, I say we. I mean Steve, my husband actually. Um, he made a like a butternut squash and chickpea curry, which we had on Monday night. The girls didn't have that, by the way. They had something else. They weren't interested. Um, and I had some of that um, for my lunch yesterday. So is that what people mean, or are they mixing up? Anyway, do do chat away and let, let us know. Something on toast. Yeah, sandwiches, soup, salad. I mean, you know, we're constantly in soup weather, aren't we? Let's face it. Okay. Oh, Mexican tortilla pie. Goodness, that sounds good. With black beans, tomatoes. Wow. Wow, that sounds lovely. I mean, that's a good one. One of the things I've, yeah, I don't know if this is what you mean, Anna, but um, we have packets of tortilla wraps. They're wrapped in plastic, I'm afraid. I don't know how else to get those. But if you put one in a pan, sprinkle over cheese and then put in odds and bits and bobs of vegetables, a bit more cheese and then put the other one on top, squash it down in your pan. That makes a really nice sort of crunchy tortilla sort of sandwich that you can cut with a pizza wheel. I mean, that's, that's quite a nice one. Um, okay, how are we doing for time? I'm just going to share a few more ideas about um, easy lunch tips with um, some sort of leftover and um, tips in there, preparation tips. So I'm going to whiz through those. Um, we've got that, that's my sort of, this one's here. Don't worry if you don't want to just read all that, you can have that afterwards, but I'm going to whiz through them now. Um, one lunch prep tip is, if you're doing like a Sunday meal or, or whatever, when you ever cook on a Sunday, uh, your, your main meal at the weekend, if the oven is on, use that uh, time to roast some vegetables. So um, roast onions, peppers, carrots, parsnips, cauliflower, put those in whatever temperature it's on until they start to go sort of caramelized or crispy, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes, not too long pop that in the fridge and you can use that as a salad base. And you can just add those to some fresh leaves or whatever. Um, and, you know, butternut squash is another, another lovely one. Um, ovens obviously kick out an awful lot of power. So I, I'm not sure about turning on the oven just randomly for lunch during the week, but if you're cooking in the evening, 
why not do some lunch prep? Chop, over, chop up leftover cooked green beans and carrots and add to salad or soup, peas too. Okay, so you've cooked your Sunday meal or something during the week and there are leftover green beans and carrots. Actually, if you pop those in the fridge and they're cold, they're really nice to add to a salad. Um, you know, prep do that all the time. They're, things are full of green beans and peas and carrots. So, you know, don't throw those away, they're great. You can also chuck all those sorts of leftovers into um, soups. Don't be worried about that. We'll talk about soups in a second. If you've got leftover pitters and wraps, you can make crunchy chips. Um, I snip them. There's always one in the end of a packet that looks a bit sort of, I don't know, past its best. If you snip it using scissors into pieces, drizzle a bit of oil, bake it, you can make um, little dips, little sort of chips to, to have with dips. Um, you can also snap them and have them on top of soup if you like. Forage the kitchen, okay. If you've got a lone apple, pear or peach, you can slice those into a salad. Peach and salad, very trendy, you know, so do, do try those. Um, you probably all know about things like smoothies. Of course, if you've got sort of a sad looking bit of fruit and, you know, veg, you can put those in smoothies, but also into your lunch. If you've got nuts and seeds, um, if you've got sort of half packets of something or other nut or seed, you can sprinkle those over your soups for extra protein, um, add them into salads. If, um, if nuts and seeds are looking a bit sort of past their best, you can pop those in the oven as well and they crisp up, you can sprinkle a little bit of paprika or something on them as well and they're a really nice snack. Half a packet of tofu. Now this, this is something I'm quite guilty of until I tried um, a tofu baguette from a Taste of Vietnam who's in uh, St Albans. You basically fry a bit of tofu and put it in a French stick with apple slices, leaves, a little bit of some sort of chilli sauce maybe, or you can make a salad dressing. Delicious tofu sandwich. Um, if you've got leftover bits of cheese, you can whiz soft cheese um, to make a dip. So you could perhaps with beetroot and feta. You can also crumble them over, over soup. You know, that's fine, you can do that. If you have um, leftover beans and pulses, um, say if you bought a tin of beans and you've had some of them, but it's just you, um, you can make them into dips and, and sandwich spreads. Black beans are brilliant for making, uh, putting in a wrap with some vegetables for, for a sandwich. Um, leftover heartier things like chickpeas and butter beans, you just put them into soups. Um, one of the things that sort of frustrates me is you go into like a prep, they sell things like tomato and mushroom soup. There's no protein in them, so you're going to feel hungry later on. Put the, uh, make, if you make your own soups, pack them with, with pulses and, and lentils. Okay, have you got leftover cooked veg? Some roast onions, some, some I don't know, three green beans, the kids have left some carrots or whatever, some broccoli, kids leave broccoli, don't they, they do that. Make a frittata. Now that's a bit of a classic uh, leftover thing, but you might not have made one. I don't think I made one until about two, three years ago. You need a small pan, small as you've got really, uh, whisk together two or three eggs, pour the eggs into the pan, a non-stick pan, let it cook for a couple of minutes till it's starting to sort of bubble. Put over your leftover vegetables. You only need a couple of tablespoons, a handful, as many as you can fit in. Press them down a bit into the egg and then pop it under a grill just to, 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 um, to make it all go brown and crispy on top. Slide that out. That is a really good lunch there, hot or cold. Have you got a tired cauliflower? Okay, you've got an enormous cauliflower, you've used half, what you do with the rest. Uh, snip it into florets, drizzle over some oil and paprika and roast. Roast cauliflower, very trendy, delicious in salads, in wraps, you can, you know, dip it into things, um, lovely. And then if you've just got too much of something, you've got had your veg box arrive and you've got a massive bag of kale, it happens to me all the time, give it to a neighbour. I mean, we've got a WhatsApp group now that's only just, you know, started in the last year and, um, you know, give it to someone else. If you just know you're not going to use it, at least offer it to someone else. Um, you could try freezing it. You might fancy it later on, uh, uh, you know, a couple of days later. Um, I soup so many things. You can make soup out of anything. Um, cook an onion, um, you know, a bit of celery, a bit of garlic, add 
you, you know, add your vegetable, whether it's spinach or whatever, frozen peas put in there, tin of tomato, bit of water, that's going to be soup. It's going to taste lovely. Um, do, do have a go with soups. If um, you do want some recipes, oh, actually that, that slide's quite useful there, if we go back to that one. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, the green roasting tin. Um, that's brilliant for um, really easy veggie recipes that you can just sort of put in, um, in, put in the oven. And this is a new book over here, the Anna Jones book, uh, One Pot, Pan and Planet. And she talks a lot about the environment in that, a lot about leftovers, um, some really creative ideas there. So if you've got sort of some rice or whatever, what, what's actually, are you, are you okay to eat rice? Yes, you are. If you've cooked it yourself, you know, feel fairly confident nothing's gone wrong with it in a day. Um, lots of recipes there. Um, I have a website as well, beckyalexander.com. Loads of free recipes on there. Um, so you can have a look on there. And I think if we're thinking about saving the planet in your lunch break, you know, you've got five lunches, Monday to Friday. You only really need four or five lunch ideas um, and you can just rotate them. So, you know, why not? Why not have a, just find a couple of veggie, vegan, easy lunches and, and have a go from there and just sort of switch around. Okay, I think that's, that's the end of me waffling on. Um, Hopefully we're going to hear from David now and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk and we'll have time for some questions. I'm going to catch up on some of the comments as well. Um, it looks like all sorts of delicious things mm. in there. Um, Fantastic. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Becky. Um, okay. That's really good stuff. We, um, have we got time for a quick poll, Helena? We're probably running a little bit over, aren't we? Um, let's do it at the end if we've got time. Um, so in the meantime, I will introduce David. Um, so David's one of our Waste Aware coordinators um, who's been working for some amazing charities in the past, including Friends of the Earth and RAP before moving to local government. And he's going to talk to us about the food waste issue in Hertfordshire. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, let me share a screen and let me know, please, when this... Uh... Is that OK? Yep, looks good. Great. OK, well, thank you very much, Becky. Just to put a little bit of flesh on the bones, as it were, about what happens to food waste in Hertfordshire. Um, and the first point to make is, is that uh, most councils in Hertfordshire collect food waste for recycling. Um, seven of them now, I think, have a dedicated uh, food waste, exclusive food waste service. So many of you who are watching this will be familiar with this sort of uh, a container to put your food waste out in for weekly collection on a vehicle like this. This material is taken to anaerobic digestion plants in Hertfordshire, um, where the food waste is turned into the methane gas is extracted from it, uh, and also a, uh, a fertilizer is produced from it. So it's an extremely effective way of dealing with food waste, and it is done locally, as we'll see a little bit more in a minute. Other councils collect food waste mixed with garden waste, perhaps uh, not quite such a full bin as this one, that might not be collected actually, but, uh, and that type of material is taken to this kind of plant, an in-vessel composting plant, where the material is heat treated so that any uh, pathogens in the food waste are, are dealt with. Again, and this material produces, doesn't produce energy, but it does produce um, uh, compost, which is used on local farmers' fields to grow food in Hertfordshire. So, as, um, as Becky said, you know, there are problems with plastics recycling, but with, with food waste recycling, um, everything happens in Hertfordshire. The, uh, the, the, both the in, we have two in-vessel composting facilities, one, uh, one between uh, Buntingford and Hitchin, uh, and a, a, another one uh, in, uh, near St Albans, and we also have two anaerobic digestion plants. So although a small amount of garden waste does leave the county, um, all the food waste and all the food waste mixed with garden waste is processed in Hertfordshire where it produces energy and, uh, and fertiliser and compost for use in local agriculture. Um, what about how successful the schemes are in terms of collecting the food waste? Well, um, the, 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 the picture is a little bit mixed. Um, some councils, uh, St Albans, for example, do very well at uh, food waste recycling. Others, perhaps not quite so, uh, so, so effective. 
um, but a, a substantial amount of the food waste that's generated in the county is collected in the schemes that we've just seen uh, and processed in those facilities. But uh, as we've been discussing, a, a big problem is the food waste that doesn't actually get into the recycling system. And in fact, we don't really want it in the recycling system anyway. This is, the, this is what the food waste that finds its way into the bin, the refuse bin. Um, we've recently undertaken a, 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 a survey of the contents of typical waste bins in Hertfordshire using, uh, using internationally recognised uh, methodologies to assess the waste, waste composition analysis, the, uh, the, the process is known as. Uh, and this has found that um, nearly a quarter of the contents of the typical waste bin in Hertfordshire are made not just of food waste that hasn't been recycled, but avoidable food waste. Food, food that should have been eaten or shouldn't have been bought in the first place. So as Becky was outlining, uh, you know, whole loaves, whole, whole wedges of cheese, large quantities of fruit and veg bought, stored, thrown away, not even, uh, not, 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 no attempt to eat them. Uh, and this is the issue that we really need to find a way of addressing effectively. And it, indeed, um, this event is, is, is marks in a way the start of our latest initiative to try and uh, encourage people to waste less food. Um, uh, though, though we, we want those recycling rates to go up, but, but we want them to go up because less food is being wasted rather than because more of it's going into the recycling containers. So, so we're, we're looking for ways that, that we can share with the public ways that we can uh, hints, tips, hacks that, uh, that, that you and your friends have, we will share them on our social media sites and, and hopefully take them to um, a wide range of, uh, uh, a wide audience. Uh, and, and in that way, and we're looking for other, we're looking to work also with retailers and with farmers uh, across Hertfordshire to, to get messages to the public about the vital importance, both for our environment and for our bins and for our pocketbooks, of wasting much less food. So anyway, that's a tour of the that's a tour of the situation. And again, happy to answer any questions in the chat at the end. Okay, back to you, uh, Zoe. Brilliant. Thank you very much, David. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes left um, for questions. I can't see any in the chat. So should we just pop another poll up while um, people are thinking about their questions? Um, so if we do the food waste question, and then if you have got any questions, just pop them in the chat. Um, and we can answer them for you. Oh, we've done that one already. <laughs> okay, so one about use by dates. How do you feel about use by dates? Um, is this something that you care about or not? So the options are, I throw anything away if it's reached the use by date. I'll eat it a couple of days after the use by date. Or if it looks and smells fine, I'll eat it. I'll give you a few seconds to answer that. Can't see any questions coming in. Um, oh, blimey, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> that's great to see. Yeah, that's definitely what I do as well. <laughs> Have you got anything you want to add, Becky? Yeah, I think that's I think that's really promising, isn't it? I think um, I think people who've come along today are probably sort of very sort of quite switched on anyway about um, what they what they like to eat, um, which is which is brilliant. And, and obviously we'll be sharing those messages with our with our kids and going forward from that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of discussion even around this. You know, there's um, you know, there's diff the, the different standards agencies have have their input. The supermarkets have their input. So yeah, using your own instincts is is going to be is going to be good, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And um, should we do the last poll then? If there's no other questions coming through. Um, so, of all the food wasted in the UK, what percentage do you think comes from households as opposed to businesses, hospitality, etc.? So of all the food wasted in the UK, what percentage do you think comes from households? Is it 30, 50 or 70 percent? And then just while people are submitting their answers, I think there's a question come in. Um, how long would you bake the tortilla snips in the oven for? 
So I, I cook them um, when the oven is on for something else. So the temperature will vary, but say it's on for say at 200 fan oven, I think they're gonna take um, less than five minutes. They're really, they go very crispy around the edges very quickly and they firm up when they're out of the oven as well. So just keep an eye on them. Um, that's the thing with a lot of, you know, recipes, they're, they're very precise. When we put them in books, we have to make them very precise. But um, especially when you're using your leftovers, just go by, is it, is it cooked through and do I want to eat it? Does it look appetizing to me? Um, but yeah, just, just keep an eye and um, just a couple of, mo couple of minutes for your, for your uh, tortilla snips. I like that, snips, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we've got the answers in. 41% um, of you said 70% and you would be right. It is 70% of all the food waste in the UK comes from households. You know, a lot of people are surprised about that because people assume that it was going to come from more from hospitality and restaurants and things, but no, that is correct. And um, we're a very aware group here. <laughs> yeah. I once went to one of the um, food waste, um, the, the over near um, Willows Farm, where the food waste goes and is turned into gases and um, fertilizer. I mean, it's an incredible science. And there was a huge container um, that had come from a supermarket of bananas wrapped in plastic. And they'd obviously just overstocked or something had gone on or the weather had changed and people didn't want to buy bananas, whatever had happened. And it was a whole container of bananas going in. So it is, um, uh, incredible but but to think even when that's happening it's still mostly happening in the home is is um, amazing you know but yeah okay um well it's 1 45 exactly which is the time we're due to end um so helen has just popped becky's details in the chat there so um you can go and have a look at becky's website and um, if you've got any questions then do let us know i think i've got one question come in um, so I've got a question from Lorna, which I'll just squeeze in. Um, if you have to get a grab and go lunch, which places are the best to buy from, thinking mainly in London? Well, I mean, it does happen, Lorna. I mean, sometimes if, um, if I'm in London and it's been a really long day, um, or if I'm on a train journey around the country, it does happen. Let's be re realistic. Um, I think Leon is one of the best. They, they are trying. Uh, they used to be better in a way. They're, so their their lunches do come in like cardboard, and they do try and um, separate the food waste. I don't know if they're actually recycling everything. I think contaminated food containers are not an issue, but I think they're probably trying. They also have very good ve uh, veggie and vegan um, menus on their item. They do a really good black bean chili. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, they're they're pretty good. Um, and it's certainly when you compare someone like Leon compared to some places that do not care at all um you know we, we have to make it we just have to shop with our, our 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 feet and they will adapt i mean even mcdonald's i think they reckon they're going to be 50 percent veggie within about two years which is phenomenal um so there, yeah hope that helps brilliant thank you um, right, I can't see any other questions, so um, I think we can wrap up, but thank you so much to everybody for coming. It's been a really great session. Thank you to Becky and David. Um, oh, I've got, just got a screen Helen has just shared of the remaining events that we've got for Waste Wear. Um, so we've got an event tomorrow, Plastic Free Periods. Um, there's still time to register, so if anybody would be interested in finding out more about reusable period products, then please do join us tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and you can register on Eventbrite, the same place where you registered for this one today. Um, and then the last event that we've got is next week, um, the cutting edge of food waste. This is going to be a really exciting event. And um, we've got Watford College, um, they're actually going to be doing a live cooking demo using leftovers, as well as some pre-recorded ones. So please do come along and join us for that one as well. Um, and that's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.